Namaste, yogis, and welcome to Lifted Lotus Yoga. My name is Lacey, and I'll be your guide today. Today, I'll be guiding you through a juicy vinyan practice. Vinyan is a fusion between vinyasa and yin. Some postures will be moving one breath, one movement, while other postures will be holding for long periods of time to get that deep, juicy stretch we crave. You may want a block for your practice today, but it's not necessary. And if you don't have a block, that's okay. You can use a stack of books, or you don't have to use anything at all. Whenever you're ready, roll your mat out, find yourself into the middle of it, and I'll meet you there. Once you've rolled your mat out, go ahead and find yourself standing to the top of it. If you're using a block or a stack of books, make sure that those things are close to the top of your mat so you can easily reach them. Finding yourself standing at the top of your mat, make sure your feet are about hip width distance apart. Rise up through the crown of your head, draw your belly button in. Let your hands rest down by your sides. And maybe close your eyes for a moment and just take a few moments to feel yourself standing in your own power. Standing on your own two feet, gripping down into the earth. Feel your balance between those two feet. And maybe from your feet, work your way up, noticing the legs, past the knees and into the hips. Noticing the pelvic, the low back. Noticing all the way up the spine, past the shoulders, into the back of the head. And then noticing all the way up the front of the body, past the belly button, beyond the heart, through the throat, past the face, and into the crown of your head. Go ahead and take a big deep breath, bringing your awareness into your body and out of your mind. And then a big open mouth exhale. You can choose to keep the eyes closed or flutter them open and start to sway through the body. Just swinging the arms slightly side to side. Gently turning the body from side to side. Feeling the air rush past the arms. Feeling the weightlessness in the arms. The steadiness through the rest of your body as it keeps you balanced, centered, grounded. Take just a few more rounds of breath, moving just like this. Gradually start to come to stillness. If your eyes are not open yet, go ahead and flutter them open. Take an inhale, circle the hands up to the sky. As you exhale, turn the palms towards the earth and push the earth down and away from you. Inhale, circle up. Exhale, press down. One more like that. Inhale, circle up. This time, as you exhale, push down, fold forward, hinging at the hips. Finding yourself into a standing forward fold, or Uttanasana. This is a great place to grab your block. And you can bring your blocks right underneath your hands. And maybe set your forearms on your block, or your hands on your block, supporting yourself in this first forward fold. You can have a slight bend in your knees if you need to. Draw the belly button in to support the low back. And as always, you don't have to use this block. Taking another 10 rounds of breath here. Go ahead and close your eyes. Soften down into your forward fold. Let the crown of the head relax. Let the back of the neck relax. Maybe as you're here, you're noticing that you can fold a little bit deeper, maybe going further down onto your block or straightening the legs slightly, feeling that deep stretch through the hamstrings. Just a couple more rounds of breath here. If you're using a block or a stack of books, go ahead and move it off to the side. Take an inhale, rise up about halfway, and as you exhale, plant the hands down onto the mat, pick your right foot up, and step your right foot directly behind you. Drop down onto your right knee. Make sure your left knee is lining up with your left ankle. You've got good alignment. When you're ready, bring your hands on top of your left knee and press your left knee away. 
Let it engage your uh, core, pulling the belly button in. Lengthen the crown of the head up tall towards the sky. You can choose to have those back toes curled under or you can uncurl them. You decide what works best for you. Choose to keep the hands at the knee or inhale hands to heart. Choose to keep the hands at heart or inhale, circle the hands high to the sky. One more breath. As you exhale, hands come down to the mat, framing your left foot. Lift your right knee up and step your left foot back, downward facing dog. Finding your upside down V shape, drawing the belly button in, lengthen the tailbone back towards the back of the room. Relax through the crown of the head and spread your shoulder blades. Maybe shake the head no, maybe nod the head yes. As always, you can choose to skip this or we can find a vinyasa flow, a modified version. Go ahead and come into a plank pose, lengthening the body long and strong. And then drop down onto your knees, exhale all the way down onto your belly, elbows hugging towards your ribs. Chin touches the mat, uncurl the toes. Inhale, rise up into a baby cobra, come to the very edge of the rib cage. Pressing the tops of the feet into the mat, little to no weight is in the hands. And as you exhale, chin to the mat. Inhale, rise onto the knees, curl the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. One breath here. Press into the hands, press into the left foot. Next inhale, step the right foot through and in between the hands. Drop down onto your left knee. Make sure your right knee is lined up with your right ankle. Next inhale, rise hands to the right knee, press the right knee away and pull your belly button in. Engage your core. Get strong here first. Decide if you wanna stay right here or hands to heart center. Decide if you wanna stay here or inhale, circle the hands to the sky. One more breath. Next exhale, hands come down to the mat. Lift the left knee up, step the left foot forward into a forward fold. Feet are about hip width distance apart. Exhale into it. Inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, fold. Now let the hands like hang heavy like weights. Draw your belly button in, have a slight bend in your knees. And with your next inhale, keeping the belly drawn in, slowly start to roll yourself up. Staying engaged to the core to support the spine all the way up as you roll one vertebra at a time. Stretching out all those little tiny muscles that line your spinal column. Taking your time, keeping your chin tucked in until it's the very last thing to rise. And then maybe taking your chin all the way to the sky, letting it spread the collarbones, open the heart. Take a big inhale once you're there and exhale ah, to center space. Finding yourself back into your mountain pose, maybe sway it out, just like we did at the beginning. Couple more breaths like this. Slowly start to come to stillness. Big inhale circle, sweep the hands to the sky. Exhale, press the hands down and away. Inhale, circle the hands to the sky. Exhale, press the hands down and away. Last time, inhale, circle, sweep to the sky. This time as you press down, exhale, hinge forward and fold into your Uttanasana forward fold. Inhale, finds a halfway lift. And as you exhale, plant the hands, pick your right foot up, step your right foot directly behind you. Drop down onto your right knee. Coming into our low lunge again, our Anjanyasana, you can either have the hands to the knee, hands to the heart, or circle your hands all the way to the sky. One breath. Exhale, hands come down to the mat. Curl your right toes under if they aren't, and then lift your right knee up. Maybe you wanna step your right foot a little bit closer towards your left, closing the gap between your feet just a little bit to give you more stability as we come into crescent lunge. With your next inhale, rise hands to heart center. Make sure that left knee tracks over the left ankle, back knees. You can have it slightly bent or you can have it straight. You decide what works best for you. Hips are square towards the front of the room though. Keep those hips nice and engaged. Squeeze the hips together. Choose to keep your hands at heart or inhale, circle the hands up high to the sky. Just like we did in our low lunge. One more breath. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Step your left foot back, three-legged down dog. Lengthen the left leg long behind you, but point the toes to the mat to keep your hips square. Take another breath. 
and exhale, left foot finds the earth, downward facing dog. Choose to skip this if you'd like to, or inhale, hinge forward into your plank pose. Taking a more intense version of our vinyasa flow, exhale down halfway, keeping the knees high, into your Chaturanga Dandasana. Next, inhale, press the heart up and through into your Urdha Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, curl over the toes and come into your downward facing dog. Beautiful yogis, take a big breath and let it all go. Press into the hands, press into the left foot, and inhale, reach the right foot high into a three-legged downward facing dog, pointing the right toes down towards the mat. Stay for another breath, inhale. And with your next exhale, step the right foot through and in between the hands. Drop down onto your left knee, and inhale, circle into your low lunge. Whether your hands are at heart or hands to the sky like me, you decide. One more breath. Exhale, hands come down to the mat. If your left toes aren't curled under, curl them under now and then lift that left knee up. Step the left foot just a little bit closer to the right, maybe an inch or two. And then inhale, rise, hands to heart center, crescent lunge. Making sure that right knee tracks over the right ankle, hips are nice and square, core is engaged. Choose to keep the hands at your heart or inhale, circle the hands to the sky. One more breath here. Big inhale, and as you exhale, hands come down to the mat. Step your left foot forward, forward fold. Exhale into it. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, let the hands hang heavy, draw the belly button in, and with your next inhale, slowly round up. Slight bend of the knees can make this a little bit easier, but feel the stretch through the spine as you roll yourself up. Chin staying tucked until finally it rises all the way up. Maybe taking it to the sky, maybe spreading the collarbone, slight back bend, big inhale, and exhale to center space. Maybe find that sway, just a gentle sway. Helping you to release any tension you might have lifted to the surface of your being. And helping just to create that soft space again in between our rounds here. Couple more breaths, just like this. Slowly but surely coming into stillness. Flutter open the eyes if they aren't. Inhale, circle, sweep up, reach tall. As you exhale, press the air down and away. Again, inhale, circle, sweep up. Exhale, press the air down and away. One more, inhale, circle up. This time, hinge at the hips, exhale, fold as you circle down. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, plant the hands on the mat, pick your right foot up, step your right foot directly behind you. You know where we're going. Come into your low lunge, inhale, circle, sweep all the way to the sky if you'd like, or hands to heart or hands to knee. One breath. Exhale, hands come down to the mat. Prepping for your crescent lunge, back toes curled under. When you're ready, inhale, circle up, either hands all the way to the sky or hands to heart, you decide. One more breath. And exhale, hands down to the mat. This time, heel toe that left foot over towards the left long edge of your mat so your hands are to the inside of that left foot. Keep your back leg long and engaged. Back knees lifted off of the mat. Pull your belly button in, press into that left big toe, hugging that left knee in towards the left side of your body. Feel good and engaged here. Very strong, very active posture here in our active lizard pose. Take another breath. One more. Pressing through the hands, next inhale, swing that left leg long behind you, three-legged downward facing dog. Exhale, heel the glute for a half scorpion. Your left knee is shining towards the sky. Keep your left shoulder down with your right so you're not twisting through your heart, but twisting through your hips. Feel that opening at that left hip and take another breath. Maybe press that right heel down. And then inhale, lengthen that left leg long. Exhale, release it to the mat, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Choose to skip this if you'd like, or inhale, hinge forward, plank pose. 
Choose to keep the knees high or drop them down to the earth. Exhale down halfway, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to an upward facing dog or your baby cobra. You decide. Exhale, downward facing dog. We meet there. One breath. Press through the hands, press through your left foot. Inhale up with the right leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, heel to glute, half scorpion. Right knee shines to the sky, right shoulder stays down. Feel the opening through the right hip. Maybe press the left heel down towards the earth. Take another breath. Inhale, lengthen that right leg long. And exhale, step it through and in between the hands. Drop down onto your left knee. Inhale, circle up into your low lunge. Hands at heart, hands to sky. You decide, one breath. Exhale, hands come down to the mat. Curl your back toes under if they aren't. Lift your back knee up and circle into your crescent lunge. Whether hands come to the heart or to the sky, you decide. Get engaged and stay for that round of breath. Next exhale, hands come down to the mat. Heel toe that right foot over towards the right long edge of the mat this time. And keep that back leg nice and engaged. Press in through that right big toe. Feel very strong here in this uh, engaged lizard pose. The hips should be feeling strong. Back leg is strong. One more breath. Big inhale, listen carefully. As you exhale, step the left foot up to the outside of the left hand into a yogi squat or malasana. You can choose to use your block or your stack of books here underneath your sit bones for a little more support. Or just let the sit bones sink down in towards the earth without touching. You can have your hands to heart center, elbows to the insides of the knees, lengthen up through the crown of the head, draw the belly button in, draw the pelvic floor in and up as well. Take another breath. Maybe a smile, one more breath. Nice, release the hands and inhale, roll the sit bones towards the sky. Turn the toes in, heels slightly out. You're in a wide-legged forward fold. Let's find ragdoll pose, whether you grab opposite elbows or cross your arms overhead, or maybe let your arms hang heavy, just like we've been doing. Crown of the head, no matter where you are with the arms, hangs nice and heavy. Slight tuck of the chin, elongate that cervical spine. Soften the face. And just feel the body sink into this forward fold. Whether your arms are hanging or you've got them crossed or you're grabbing opposite elbows, you can always find a sway here. Just gently swaying the upper body. Letting it be a little weightless as you sway side to side or back and forth. Stay for about five more rounds of breath. Maybe exploring variations while you're here. Crossing arms, grabbing opposite elbows, or maybe even interlacing your hands at the back of your body and letting those shoulders rinse out as you let the hands fall behind the head. Coming out of that variation, if that's what you took. Hands come to the mat no matter where you are and start to heel toe the feet to a hip width distance. Inhale, halfway lift, pull the belly button in. Exhale, fold, hands hang heavy. Tuck your chin, inhale, slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, just like we've been doing. No rushing getting there. When you do roll up to center, let the heart roll open. Big inhale, and then an exhale to center space. This will be our last time in mountain pose, so go ahead and take advantage of it and sway it out one more time. Taking just a few more rounds of breath. Slowly start to slow down and bring yourself into stillness.
flutter open the eyes if they aren't. Take a big inhale, circle, sweep the hands to the sky. And as you exhale, press the hands down and away. Inhale, circle, sweep up. Exhale, press the air down and away. Last time, inhale, circle, sweep up. This time, exhale, hinge at the hips, pressing the air down and away as you fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, plant the hands on the mat, step your right foot back behind you, coming into your low lunge. Inhale, circle, sweep up into it, and maybe exhale into a gentle back bend here. Inhale to center, exhale, hands down to the mat. Lift your back knee up and prep yourself for your crescent. Inhale, rise into it. And maybe exhale, back bend into it. Inhale to center, exhale, hands come down to the mat. Heel toe that left foot over towards the left long edge of your mat and drop down onto your right knee this time. We're gonna hang out here in our lizard pose for a couple of minutes. So if you'd like, you can use your block or your stack of books here to bring the earth closer to you, just like I'm doing. Or you don't have to use a block or books here. You can just have your hands onto the mat for support. Or you could also come down onto your forearms if that's something that's in your practice. Noticing what feels good in your hip and then letting yourself drop into it. Go ahead and close your eyes and focus on the sensations that your body's feeling. Don't be afraid of micro movements to gently adjust yourself in the pose. Those little adjustments, those little micro movements can help you discover new space within yourself. So don't be afraid of them. Go ahead and do them if you need to. Allowing ourselves to stay here for as long as feels right. You don't have to stay here as long as I do. You can always back yourself out to a more comfortable space if it's calling to you. Always remember that as a yoga teacher, I'm acting as your guide. You don't have to do anything that I say. I'm just here to show you a certain path, a certain way of doing things, and it's up to you to decide if that's something that you like to do. Staying for just about five more rounds of breath. Feel yourself getting deeper and deeper in the pose the longer you're here. Beautiful. If you aren't already, inhale slowly, rise up onto your hands. Once you've lifted up onto your hands, go ahead and start to heel toe that left foot over towards the right long edge of your mat. Dropping down onto your left knee, finding yourself into your pigeon pose. Your right leg is long behind you. Go ahead and point those left toes back towards your right hip. Your left knee should be shooting out towards the left top corner of your room or of your mat. Again, great place for a block if you'd like to use it underneath the hands. Bringing the earth closer to you, making the posture more accessible, more enjoyable. We're gonna enjoy our time as we're here. So start to notice the things that feel good about this pose. Maybe you feel a juicy deep stretch through the left hip. Maybe you feel a juicy deep opening through the front of the right leg. Maybe you feel it in the low back. Just notice what you feel and how good it feels, focusing on the good parts of this pose. Last five rounds of breath here. And 
And with your next inhale, slowly rise back onto your hands. If you aren't, if you're using any props, push them off and out of the way. Plant your hands down onto the mat, curl your right toes under, lift your right knee up and step your left leg back three-legged down dog. Exhale, heel to glute, half scorpion, just like we've been doing. You can choose to stay right here in your half scorpion or maybe you'd like to come into a flip dog and you hinge forward over your wrists and then start to tip that left foot back behind you, flipping the heart and the hips towards the sky. Maybe the left toes find the mat for a little bit of support as you open the front of the body. When you're ready, spy your mat and inhale, flip it back over. Three-legged down dog, extend it long, and then exhale, release it to the mat, downward facing dog. Flip dog can always be a fun one to practice. Listen to your body and honor where you are. Knowing that progression comes with lots of practice. Choose to stay or inhale, hinge forward, plank pose. Finding a vinyasa flow. Exhale down halfway, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale to your upward facing dog, urdha mukha svanasana. Exhale, downward facing dog, adho mukha svanasana. And then coming right into the other side. So press through the left foot, press through the hands. Inhale up with the right leg. Exhale, heel to glute, half scorpion. Remember, you can choose to stay here or start to hinge forward over the wrists and start to flip your puppy, dropping that right foot down behind you, flipping the heart and the hips towards the sky. When you feel ready, spy your mat and inhale, flip it back. Reach that right leg long and high again. And then exhale, step it through in between the hands. Dropping down onto your left knee for your low lunge. Inhale, circle the hands to the sky. And maybe exhale, back bend. Inhale to center. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Prepping for your crescent lunge. Inhale, rise up into it. And maybe exhale, back bend into it. Inhale to center, exhale, hands down to the mat. Heel toe that right foot over towards the right long edge of the mat this time. Coming down into your lizard pose, dropping down onto your left knee, choosing to either grab for that block or maybe coming onto the forearms, onto the earth or just staying on your hands. You can uncurl your back toes if you'd like to or keep them curled under, you decide. And then let yourself be here within it, knowing that you have a few moment, moment, moments to enjoy the stretch. Feeling the weight of your hips sinking towards the earth with the gentle press of gravity. You're really not doing much of a force push or anything here. You're letting gravity do all of the heavy work. Great place to close the eyes, soften the face. Your face really doesn't need to be engaged in this pose, even though often we find ourselves squinting the eyes or scowling or pressing the lips together or the teeth together. See if you can soften those spaces for the last five rounds of breath we're here. With your next inhale, start to rise yourself up and off of your props or off of your forearms and onto your hands. Once you're lifted up, start to heel toe that right foot over towards the left long edge of your mat. Dropping down onto your right knee, point your right toes back towards your left hip. Right knee should be pointing out towards the right top corner of the room or of your mat. Left leg is still long behind you for your pigeon pose. Great place to use a block. And remember, you can also use a block underneath the sit bone behind you, the sit bone that is kind of getting most of the brunt of everything, this being the right side. Having that block under there for a little bit of support if that's something you need. Of course, only if it's something that you need. And then letting yourself come into the pose, maybe closing your eyes. And maybe assessing how this side feels compared to the other, and not in a bad way, not so you can label it good or bad, but just so you can notice the difference between the sides. Oftentimes our left and our right side will feel slightly different. 
And this is totally natural, totally normal. While we work to be even and symmetrical, we often use one side more than the other. So notice what your body feels like in between sides. Holding on here for another five or six rounds of breath. With your next inhale, slowly rise back onto the hands, move your prop out of the way, plant your hands down onto the mat this time, curl your left toes under, lift your left knee up, and step your right foot back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Adjust yourself into it. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, come down onto the knees, sit bones back onto the heels, forehead down onto the earth, child's pose. Allowing those sit bones to sink towards the mat, towards the heels. Adjusting your knees to however it feels comfortable for you. So your knees could be really close together or really far apart or anywhere in between. Allowing your head to rest down towards the mat. And if your head doesn't want to rest down towards the mat, you can always use a block to bring the earth again closer to you, using it right underneath your head. Closing the eyes, softening the face. Softening the arms, softening the heart. Balasana, child's pose, is a great place to calm the self down. Rounding into yourself, it almost mimics us being in the womb. Giving us comfort, stillness, softness. Well, for some of us, child's pose can be a challenging place with tight hips or tight ankles. Allow yourself to sink into it for just a few more rounds of breath. Knowing that if you are feeling a little overwhelmed in this pose, just notice that. Try not to criticize yourself for it. Knowing that the more you come here, the easier it'll get. Oh, five more rounds of breath. With your next inhale, reach your hands forward and slowly rise yourself into a tabletop pose, finding an all fours position. Lining the wrists up below the shoulders and the knees up below the hips. Make sure the feet are out long behind the knees and draw the belly button in. Supporting your spine, getting a nice long straight spine. Your gaze should be down between the hands as you lengthen the crown of the head forward. Lengthen the tailbone back and then start to sway the hips side to side from left to right, right to left. Swinging them so far right and so far left that you feel a little gentle stretch through the outside of the hips. Do this a couple more times. And 
The next time you find your hips all the way to the right, stop, swing your hips down around to the heels, over to the left and back up to center. Big giant circles with your hips to the right, going a few more times. Helping create mobility and flexibility within the hips and helping to spread the synovial fluid all the way around the femoral head, that hip socket, right in that hip socket. When you're ready, find stillness and start to sway the hips side to side again. Keeping the belly drawn in, no banana backs. Next time your hips are all the way to the left, swing them down and around to the heels, over to the right and back up to center. Big circles with the hips to the left this time. Going about the same amount of times as you did to the right. Whenever you feel like you've had enough, you've done about the same, find yourself back to stillness. Cross your ankles behind you over the other, doesn't matter which, and then just simply roll over those ankles, bringing yourself into the middle of your mat. Soles of the feet onto the mat, knees towards the sky. Wrap your arms around the front of those knees, drop your chin in towards your heart, and just allow yourself to be here in apanasana, knees to chest, seated variation. Close the eyes and maybe say something nice to yourself while you're here. Like I did good today. Or I'm so glad I came to my mat. Or maybe repeat a mantra. All is well. I trust the process. Love flows through me and to me. I am a radiant divine being. Or maybe just find a few moments of silence. Bring your chin up away from your chest, unwrap your arms from around your knees, lay your legs out, and slowly lay yourself all the way down into a Shavasana. Your Shavasana can look anything like anything you want it to look like. You can lay on your back, you can lay on your side, you can lay on your belly if you'd rather. Let yourself come into a place of rest for a few moments. I like to rest my hands on my body, but some like to rest their hands out wide. You decide what works best for you. Closing the eyes, softening the face completely, start to weigh the body into the earth. Letting the back of the body get really heavy. Maybe feeling the back of the head sink down into the earth. Feeling the shoulder blades way down. Feel the entirety of your spine heavy. Feeling the glutes like rocks sinking down. Feeling the back of the legs, every place that touches the earth, heavy, sinking, solid. Letting the entirety of your body be very heavy while you lay here reaping the benefits of your practice. I believe Shavasana is a very sacred space. So please stay here as long as you would like. I'm gonna leave you here in your Shavasana so you can decide whenever you're ready to get up. 
Before you do get up, though, know that I am so honored to share this practice with you. And that from my heart to your heart, I bow to you full of gratitude. Namaste.